Hello and welcome to my show Indus Cuisine and I'm your chef Basim Akhu and we're back with another new recipe from the heart of Pakistan. Today's recipe has been a part of Pakistan since the Indus civilization. Why am I saying so? Because we're making the Sultani Dal with some pakoras today. Sultani means Shahi. Shahi means royal basically. So we're making this royal dal. Dal everyone knows in the West basically they sell it as um, lentil soup. But in Pakistan we do not make it like a soup, we make it like a meal. So today's recipe has been traced back to the Indus civilization and how is that so? So in Pakistan, in the province of Sindh, this civilization which has been discovered quite some time ago called the Mohenjo-Daro civilization which is also known as the Indus Valley civilization. If in the current day, if you go into their museums, you see uh, pots uh, made out of clay which is from back in the day and you can even find traces of lentil also known as dal in our own language in those pots. And it is very famous story that the Rajputs from Rajasthan when the subcontinent was won used to make beautiful and delicious uh, forms of different lentils. Why? Because the Mughal Empire was usually meat-based. And uh, when these people, they came to India, Pakistan, which was the subcontinent back in the day, the Mughal Empire, especially Akbar in his time, he was very impressed by the art and culture of the Rajasthani people. And back in the day, he made a tradition in his royal kitchen that once a week, this dal will be cooked. To an extent when Akbar married Joda Bai back in the day. She was given the responsibility of cooking uh, vegetarian meals once a week in the kitchen and this is how this became a part of every Muslim household in current day Pakistan also. This recipe is uh, being made in two parts basically. The first part is we'll be making the dal and the second part is we'll be adding pakoras also known as fritters in uh, the west and which will be served with the dal. This recipe is usually eaten with naan bread but the most uh, common thing which is uh, used with this recipe is white basmati rice simply boiled. Obviously now I'm not going to teach you how to boil some basmati rice because that's very simple but I shall teach you how to make the whole meal in one go. So today's recipe is easy and the ingredients are as followed. So you need some gram flour, you need some clarified butter. So you can see two parts of clarified butter. Why? Because the first part shall go in the recipe and the, uh, the second part of the clarified butter will go for the tempering of the recipe. Then you need cumin seeds, you need red chilli powder, you need salt to taste, you need chilli flakes, you need some ginger, garlic, you need some yogurt, you need some milk, you need around two onions and two tomatoes and around a cup and a half of dal, dal also known as lentil. Today we're using moong dal, there's no other word for it, why? Because when you come to Pakistan, you can find different forms of dal. It's like, for example, when you say meat, meat means chicken meat, means game meat, meat also means uh, beef, it also means lamb meat. So when you talk about lentils, in Pakistan we have multiple forms of lentil, for example, dal, moong, dal, mash, chana dal, these are all the local things you call these lentils. Why? So this is what we need. Okay, now you need to remember one thing before cooking the dal, this dal is a bit wet. You can see it's kind of sticking together. Why? Because you need to soak it for at least 30 minutes before it hits the pan or it hits the heat anytime. Okay, so what we'll do first is we shall take a pressure cooker and pressure cook the dal so that it takes uh, this nice creamy texture and then we shall mix it with all the other ingredients. So firstly, what do you need? I'll let you know. You need a pressure cooker. We shall open it and we shall just add a few things in it. Okay, so we'll keep the lid over here. That's the whistle. Keep it back over here. First, what you'll do is you shall transfer the dal into this because we just simply boiling the dal and doing nothing else. So the dal goes in, just like shake it, why? Because when the dal is wet, it kind of tends to stick in the bowl. We don't want to waste it at all. Then the second part goes in, shake it a bit and it's in. Now what you need to do, I'll just bring it here and I'll show it to you. You need to add water, but not too much. You should add only a liter of water in two cups of soaked dal. Litre of water goes in and that's about it. 
This jug is a liter and a half almost, so that's why I just put some of the water here and the remaining is over there. Pick up the lid, place it on top, press it, and it's done. So now, when you're making dal in the pressure cooker, what you need to do is, you need to be very careful. It's not like the meat that you'll just let it be over there for 30 minutes. Why? Because when dal is cooking, it leaves a foam, right? So if you're cooking it in a pressure cooker, it's going to start coming out. So once the whistle starts blowing, it starts moving like this, what you'll do is, you shall reduce the heat. And when the heat has been reduced, then you'll cook it for another six minutes, that's it. So you cannot let the whistle keep going like this and this, otherwise it's going to start coming out. It's going to ooze out. Okay, so increase the heat, increase the flame. Once the whistle goes off, I'll reduce the heat to medium. So now what you need, you need a fresh frying pan or you need a wok, which is over here. I'll keep it here and I'll keep the lid on the side. This is done. Now you need to add a bit of clarified butter. Raise the heat, once the heat is up and the pan is hot, we shall add it over here. Okay, so let the pan come to heat. I'll keep the lid over here and we need two onions finely chopped. So, we have two medium onions, the roots on, just cut it like this and keep it over here. Pass the knife and just finely chop the onions. Keep the root on the side, you don't want that. Take the roots and throw it in the dustbin. There goes the root and the last part of the onion. We shall brown the onions just a bit. Not too much, remember that. root goes back here. Okay, now you should add around four to five tablespoons of clarified butter. It goes in over here. And as you can see, it's melted properly. Now you should add the onions in it. So just transfer the onions first. If there's some onion on the slab over here, just throw it in the dustbin. Okay, this is done. Mix it up. Add some salt around a quarter teaspoon. Not too much, I just want the onions to start sweating. Is done. Give it a lid. Reduce the heat to low. And let it cook for around two minutes. I'll just rinse my hands once. And now, just continue. Okay, so now what you need is you need your garlic and ginger. But for this recipe, you won't shred it. You need to finely Chop it, the ginger. So this is all I need when it comes to ginger. First, finely slice it like this. Keep it on the side. Keep piling the ginger after slicing it on the side. Remember that. This goes here. Now, turn it. And finally, chop it. This is done. You can see the cooker has gone up. Reduce the heat to low and now come back to the onions. The onions are soft and translucent. First goes in the ginger. Around one tablespoon, I've Cut some extra, so I'll keep it on the side. Do not waste it. Mix it up well. And now you need some garlic. So with the garlic, I'll just slice them. So I'll take around.
four cloves. Finely slice them. I'll rinse my hands once more. And just slice them, nothing else. Keep an eye on the onions, you don't want them to go bad. Take the root of the garlic out, which I've kept on the side. And here we go. It's almost done. Pick this up. Toss it in over here. Take the root parts of the garlic. And there we go. This is done. Give it a lid. And let it cook for a minute. Okay. Till the time this is cooking, what we'll do is we'll take around two tomatoes. Take the eye of the tomato out, this part. Cut from between, take it on the side. Between, take it on the side. Okay, now what you need to do is you need to finely chop them. So I just go as close as I can. Keep looking at this. And if you use the tip of your knife, the finer the cut will be. So if you can't manage a very big knife like the one I'm using, it's around a 12 inch one, you can use a 10 or an 8 inch knife, you should get better control. I use a bigger knife, why? Because I have better control over that also, but the other reason is that I can scoop things up and I can toss them in the pan. Okay, this is done. Now, first you'll add the red chili powder. Then you shall add a bit of cumin seeds and then you shall add a little bit of salt around a quarter teaspoon this is done mix it up I'm, I'm adding the spices right now for one reason only the reason is that the oil is out and I want the spices to fry This is done. Now I'll transfer the tomatoes over here. Tomatoes go in. And mix it up well. Increase the heat to full. And just... Spin it. This is done. I shall add around a tablespoon of oil, not too much. Oil I'm talking about, not clarified butter. Just on the side of the pan to give it a nice frying texture and give it a lid. Reduce the heat to low and let it cook for five minutes. Why? Because you want it to break down. So till the time this is cooking and the dal is also cooking, go for a short break. Once we're back, I'll tell you what to do because there are a lot of ingredients we need to use right now. Keep watching in this cuisine. Welcome back. You're watching in this cuisine, and I'm your chef Basim Akhund. As you can see in the break, we just did one thing. Firstly, here you can see the dal. It's completely cooked. It's so soft that I would like to show it to you. So, as you can see, it's developed a nice creamy texture. We need this. I'll keep it on the side and we shall continue. Okay, the other thing I did was I let the tomatoes and the onions cook on really low heat, okay? So, you can see, now you have to just press it to convert it into a nice paste. So... This is done. The second thing, increase the heat to full and now you shall add a little bit of milk. The milk is over here. I'll just take the cling wrap off a bit like this and I shall not pour it in one go. Just three tablespoons or four tablespoons as I said and then I shall cook it on high heat. Keep mixing it. And this is done. Okay, now the first thing. You shall take the lentil and pour it into this.
and move it. Reduce the heat and just put the lid a bit slanting while you don't want it to pop out. Okay, so reduce the heat to really low. And now, you need to add a few things. First, you should add the remaining milk on the side like this. Brings down the temperature, keep this on the side. And then the yogurt. Add the yogurt in it. Only five tablespoons, this is a bit more. So I'll keep it on the side. And now add half a teaspoon of salt. The remaining cumin seeds. And that's about it. Now, you should let this cook for another five minutes on low heat. And then after this, I shall temper it. Okay, but till the time this is cooking, we shall come on to the next part, which are the pakoras, also known as fritters. This is done. Give it a lid. And I shall switch it over here. Whenever you're shifting a pan with a handle, use both your hands. This won't be too fancy with one. Okay, if it's filled with something hot or with even cold food. Okay, the chances of dropping it are more. You can slip or something or the other can happen. So reduce the heat over here. And now what you need is take these tempering things on the side and let's start cooking the fritters. Okay, for the fritters, what you, what you need? You need some gram flour, you need baking soda, you need coriander powder, you need cumin powder, you need around a cup of carrots, which I'll chop in front of you, and then you need a cup of spinach. And you need some hot oil, which we shall get ready over here. Keep the pan here, add around, not too much of oil, but oil just for frying. So I'm going to shallow fry it. So I shall add around a cup, not too much as I said. Oh, this takes, let's just open the bottle and let it go in. That's about it. A cup of oil. And reduce the heat over here to low and let it cook. Okay, once this comes to heat, increase the heat to medium because you don't want to burn the oil. Now you should get ready with the carrots. Okay. Take this part out. You don't want it. The carrots are already peeled. This goes in the dustbin. And then we shall finally slice it. So like cut it like this. And now I'll make really thin slices of the carrot. Finely slice it as thin as you can go. And keep all the slices together, okay, in one angle. And here we go. The carrot is, carrot is here. We'll keep the rest on the side because this is one cup. Turn it like this. and cut it. Okay, this is done. Pick up a fresh bowl from the back. Keep it here. Toss the carrots in. Keep an eye on the dal over here. It's cooking perfectly, but remember, whenever you're making dal, keep mixing it. You don't want it to like go and stick at the bottom. This is done. I'll put the heat low, like really low, and I'll pick some spinach up. Okay, you need a cup of spinach. This would do. So, so the spinach is here. You need to finely chop it. And when you come towards the part where the sticks are a bit thick, 
top and throw it in the dustbin. Okay, now I'm going to turn the spinach around and chop it. This is done. Now pick the spinach up and toss it in the bowl. That's done. Now the oil is hot. The spinach and the carrots are in. The first thing that goes in is salt. Let's say half a teaspoon, not too much. Then you need to add cumin powder. Keep it on the side, whatever you've used. Coriander powder. You need some baking soda. Now, mix it up properly. You want all the flavors to come together, remember that. So I'm going to like mix it right now with the masala, the spice only, like a dry rub. Keep pressing it so that the masala, the flavor goes in. The spinach and the spinach comes together. As you can see, it's collapsing. It's losing its own moisture. Why? Because the salt is bringing it out. Now, goes in the gram flour. Mix it up. A little bit of more gram flour. You're basically making it into a thick texture which we shall fry. So slowly and gradually keep adding it. You do not want to add too much of it, okay? A little bit more. So I mentioned it in the recipe card how much you need but you should add it gradually with steps. Okay, now you can see it's like Play-Doh. It's done. Rinse your hands once. Now, once you've rinsed your hands, remember to dry them. Why? Because you need to fry it. So if you'll drop water over here, you shall hurt yourself. Okay, so what I'll do is we'll do the fry test. Okay, what's the fry test? Just pick a piece of spinach. Take a piece and if it's frying, it's done. Okay, this is done. So now the oil is ready to be used. The temperature is perfect. Reduce the heat to medium, not too high because you don't want to burn it. And the other thing what you'll do is, you'll pick up an empty bowl. You'll add some oil, a little bit of oil. And the next thing is, take off the watch. Okay, so add some oil to your hand. Why am I doing it? I'll tell you. This way, the things in the bowl won't stick to my hand. Now just pick it up, press it like this, like you're making a meatball. It's over here. and place it in the oil. Pick it up. Make a meatball type of a texture, like a shape basically, and place it in the oil. I'll keep doing this. I'll pick around four to five of these. You need to press them to bring them closer, bring them together. Press them a bit down and let them cook. Now what you need to do is you need to start dishing out the dal and do the tempering. I'll clean the place out and I'll show you what to do next. But remember, for the fritters, cook it for two minutes each side. As you can see, the fritters are done. They're over here and the dal is done. But you don't serve it like this. So back in the day when the Mughal emperors finally found love for the dal, for the lentil. What they did was every time the lentil was served, they used to temper it differently to bring out the flavor of it. Okay, so how will you temper it? You should add around 
half a cup of clarified butter, let it get really really hot and it will be hot once the pan is sizzling properly and uh, what I did for the fritters was only one thing that one thing was that I just cooked it for two minutes each side on medium heat and when I changed the other side it went to medium low the heat why because you want it to maintain its texture its flavor you cannot overcook it remember that okay so first you'll add some sage leaves, some cumin, and then red chili flakes. Move it, bring it on the side, fry it for only 15 seconds, close it, and pour it over here. And this is how the kings ate they're lentils. I hope you liked today's episode. We'll meet you in another episode. Take care of yourself. Bye-bye.